David Sandbeck running for Congress in Minnesota's 4th Congressional District, and one of the key issues we need to deliver economic justice is enact taxation reform and gather uncollected taxes. So taxation is one of the most contentious, um, divisive issues among conservatives and liberals. You know, hardly a press opportunity passes without, you know, some no tax conservative, uh, like, um, you know, former speakers of the house, you know, uh, John Boehner or Paul Ryan, uh, where they're, um, where they're decrying all of the overtaxing, all of the overregulating, overspending, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing that, that they, uh, complain about going on in Washington. But if you switch over to a conservative like David Stockman, who was a Reagan conservative and former head of the White House's um, budget office in the early 80s, who retired after a long investment banking career, Stockman condemned the simplistic and reckless idea that the way to stimulate the economy is to cut taxes anytime, anywhere, for any reason, uh, which has become gospel in the grand old party, you know, the Republican Party. It's become a religion, uh, a mindless incantation. And uh, in fact, total income taxes paid by corporations or individuals as a percent of income and gross domestic product in the United States is at the lowest level in decades. That is a major reason why government deficits are exploding having less revenue to meet spending levels of government, including unpaid wars, resulting in trillion dollar plus deficits a year. Stockman says this plunge into red ink started with George W. Bush, and he put forward massive increases in defense spending and large reductions in the revenue base while not making any effort at cutting spending of the corporate state. What is Stockman's favorite tax? It would be one levied on financial transactions. In effect, a sales tax on Wall Street speculation, one that could raise big money every day, showing that one can never stereotype conservatives, even ones like David Stockman, who would cut all kinds of uh, federal social services and boondoggle military programs. He describes Wall Street in these words. We have a massive casino that's doing nothing but churning transactions by the millisecond. Robots trading with each other. As a result, the Federal Reserve juicing the system continuously with overnight money that's free. There's no productive value for Main Street or the real U.S. economy. A speculation tax on hundreds of trillions of dollars annually spent chasing derivatives would not have to be more than one half of 1% to raise $300 billion a year. The European Commission proposed such tax as well. 11 European countries already have some lesser form of a transaction tax. Such a tax is an easy sell to shoppers who have to pay a 6 to 8%, maybe more, uh, in retail sales tax in stores when they buy the necessities of life. Left and right shoppers is where the convergence can start, but to get off the ground, it would need some high profile political leadership and media reporting and commentary. You know, we won't get such a financial transaction tax, one championed, by the way, by many organized nurses um, who, and, um, you know, we wouldn't get this unless we get uh, leading financial columnists for the New York Times, like uh, Floyd Norris or Gretchen Mortensen on this issue. But I think it's more promising to start a dialogue outside the box of this left and right wrangling over the tax rates for income, uh, capital gains and dividends. So I think they should all be taxed at the same rate. You know, think outside the box, or even if it's inside the box, we might consider proposing that before taxes on work or labor, there should be taxation of what society likes the least uh, or um, dislikes the most so as to diminish those unsavory activities. For example, um, if we tax carbon pollution, you know, that's a policy favored by ExxonMobil, several leading Republicans, liberal and conservative economists, and many environmentalists. 
and a tax uh, on uh, financial speculation. Uh, we can hike gambling taxes. We can tax addictive products like tobacco, alcohol, and certain addictive drugs. We can raise penalties on corporate crime along with other harmful activities and do all that before going for worker incomes. Conservative Nobel laureate in economics Gary Becker, a uh, former Secretary of the Treasury uh, George P. Schultz, and former economic advisor to the president of George W. Bush, uh, that would be um, Gregory uh, Menkew, are leading proponents of a carbon tax or a gasoline tax to pay for the damage called externalities by economics, uh, by economists, of uh, motor vehicle traffic. Canadian reformers have a saying for this, tax what we burn, not what we earn. And uh, Ralph Nader might add, uh, tax first what we bet, not what we net. When this idea has been discussed before mixed audiences, um, activists like Ralph Nader found much convergent interests in these kinds of priorities for taxation. Although some want carbon tax to be revenue neutral, um, you know, we don't really know uh, how all of these out of the box proposals, uh, if they have transaction, uh, have traction, unless uh, there's politicians and uh, some corporate leaders like Warren Buffett, who can lead the way in giving these ideas visibility and credibility, and then help people mobilize. As to the, the chronic matter of the owed but uncollected taxes, where these miscreants are flouting the law, you know, signing on should be an easy decision for conservatives. Such flouting is unfair to those who actually pay the taxes and actually uh, have to pay more or receive fewer services. And uh, it amounts to the IRS uh, saying that, um, you know, this is a, a cost to our society of over $300 billion a year in tax evasion. This is not the same as the tax avoidance, uh, the type practiced by corporate interest that legally uses these, these um, you know, tax havens, uh, what some people might call um, these scoundrel states um, and other arcane ways that have pushed through Congress to escape taxes, but uh, it's a violation of the law. And amazingly, many conservatives and libertarians uh, that, um, you know, uh, speak out about our, our tax regime, look at cheating as a sort of a sport, as a way to make up for the too many taxes people have to pay. All right. I'm David Sandbeck. I'm running for Congress in Minnesota's 4th Congressional District, and I'm a New Deal Democrat. Thank you.